I think that um, we have done a significant amount on these goals this year, and we've been really f focusing on you know trying to achieve as much as possible. And they may carry over till next year. Right. But we, you know we have ten goals. Uh, the first is you know public safety, and we, you know we've done some things with that. Um, you know we've developed a, a good relationship with the new commander of Lamita Station, and told him that, of our concerns of fighting crime in the community. And so what we have done is in our new budget is added a bike patrol on Western Avenue and PV Drive South. Mm -hmm. We've also added more volunteer hours from the Sheriff's Department to be more visible in our community. I think uh, 1,920 more hours, man hours, of uh, uh, volunteer patrol where we have a, where the Sheriff Department sends out a, um, uh, I guess it's not a black and white car, but it's a white car and it does have lights. But they're out patrolling the neighborhoods. And one of the, th the areas, uh, crime areas, that we really wanted to focus on was burglaries. And so they're out there, you know, in the neighborhoods that have had issues in the past, you know, patrolling around, looking for anything that looks suspicious. And um, we're also asking, you know, people to be organized, maybe get into neighborhood watches. Yeah, that, and that I can't kind of say thing. enough for our neighborhood watch in Seaview. It's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, th those kind of things are very important to having a good um, community that, uh, you know, where there's a low crime rate and where people are looking out for each other. Right. you got to lock your doors, lock your cars, because opportunity makes a thief. That's part of it, too, right? You need to... Oh, yeah. So, so the council has, has uh, included those kind of things in our budget. Uh, in addition to that, the Sheriff's Department is uh, hosting crime prevention seminars citywide and at HOAs. They had a uh, uh, Sheriff's Department booth here at our 4th of July picnic right. uh, or celebration. They're doing door hanger programs with crime prevention tips. Last month's city newsletter had uh, crime prevention tips in it, and so I, if residents still have that newsletter, I would encourage them to look at that and uh, read that so they can uh, be more prepared. Um, there's also, uh, we had a pro public presentation by Deputy Bartlett talking about best prevention, crime prevention um, tips. Uh, we, the RPV st city staff is posting breaking news on our city website in regards to crime and, and, and we have a direct link with the Sheriff's Department with their um, uh, mm. website. Right. So I think we're, we're working on all those things and the thing is we're going to keep working on those mm -hmm. and try to add more uh, and enhance and, and make things even better in, in that number one goal. Right. We as a community need to be more organized than these, these burglars that have sort of figured out that this is a nice little pocket down here. Well, I mean, we're well, still this one of the safest areas in LA County. We Let's, are, we are, but, and I, I want to emphasize that. Yeah. But the economy and the early release program are two things that our council wanted to be proactive about. Absolutely. Because we didn't want to say, oh, well, we're going to just go ahead and we got a lower crime rate than other areas. Right. We'll just go ahead and be complacent. We wanted to go ahead and give um, our community the protection. Uh, so we can make sure that the bad guys, well, if they're going to do anything, it's not going to be in our community. Right. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. The other, the other project that we've been working on, of course, is San Ramon. That's a big one. Yeah. That's a, a big, $20 million this, dollar big one, right? I mean, there's another landslide, you right. know, uh, Terrapaca landslide. So we uh, had a uh, seminar this uh, recently on the council uh, that talked about financing for that uh, project and the remaining financing because we already have nine point four million dollars in a state grant but we're we're needing to find other monies soon so we can go ahead and start the project and make sure that we finish it in time so our state grant uh, is so are you working on that because I know didn't you go to Washington DC and we worked on I did, that I did, I did go to, to Washington get some, DC some funds but, from the feds yeah well that unfortunately didn't work out because okay. The not, federal funding was only $500 million nationwide, that's, yeah. and it was so competitive. 
Right. I think they had like $50 billion worth of applications for oh, the $500 well. million dollar grant. So you still, at least you're halfway there. We're halfway there, but we're, we're working very diligently to get that solved. And hopefully, we're hoping in the fall to, uh, to have uh, groundbreaking. And we've also heard in the past, I know I've been gone for a little bit, but I don't know if the city of Los Angeles and then the county, they all sort of have interest as well in making sure this yes. gets remedied. Are we getting some assistance on that front? Well, we're, we're, we're still working with them. Uh, they have uh, some issues, too. The right. county has some tough uh, fiscal issues. So does the city of L.A. And now they have their own landslide down on White's Point. Uh, it's, it's actually very bad. Right. Um, so. so, I mean, I think that uh, with their support, we will continue to move forward. It's, we're certainly going to continue talking to them and seeing if we can get them to assist us in this um, in this endeavor. In the meantime, you hope for light rains in the next season. Well, so, like no. I said, we're hoping to we're hoping to break ground. In, you know, uh, la latter part of the fall. Oh, great! Well, we'll definitely be back to have yeah. to keep us posted on that one. Yeah. And your third goal is uh, regarding and citizen ci involvement. We've you know involved our, our citizens in uh, public outreach on uh, safe routes to schools. Um, you know, with parent surveys and, and student tallies, uh, our staff has been working on that with the, the local PTAs. Uh, we have been uh, preparing uh, reports. Staff has been actually preparing reports and working with the public on such things as garage sales, FAR, which is floor area ratio uh, type of um, uh, questions, hedges, uh, cleanup, uh, to certain aspects in our, our, our codes, our, our uh, ordinances, such as open space hazard and GIS zoning, and that oh, wow. kind of thing. And, you know, we also had some quite a bit of public involvement when we d recently did our rules and procedures. Right. Um, and they, and the public really did have a good hand in writing some of those things in, in the rules and procedures. And I think it's it great that we had the public you know, involvement in that way. And of course, there's different committees and all that as well. Yeah. Done. And I don't know how the city's doing now in terms of still needing to recruit, but I guess, is there one way they check the city website to, to see opportunities? Yes. Yeah, that would be check the city website, check with the city clerk's office, right. that kind of thing. Uh, as far as the public infrastructure, again, uh, we have uh, staff and, and the San Ramon subcommittee working on pursuing funding sources for the San Ramon project. Uh, we're currently, or we, we have uh, passed in the budget a new dewatering well for Abalone Cove. Uh, staff is working with uh, engineers and geologists to conduct uh, landslide, we'll conduct the landslide workshop and to get you know, information out to the public. Abalone Cove uh, sewer lift station was recently repaired. Great. And. Um, Look at all the things you know, you've been doing since I've been gone. I'm glad <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> I mean, and, and we're working on, you know, the storm drain lining. Uh, the million dollar uh, was re recently approved by the council to work on storm drain lining. And so we're, and we're continuing to work on our roads, filling the potholes, that kind of thing. Uh, so we're, we're continuing to work on, on public infrastructure issues. Uh, so that was goal number four. Four. Number five you know, government efficiency and fiscal control and transparency. Um, you know, the following information is now posted on our website. That is employee salary rates, employee salary ranges. Uh, the city adopted a pension revision that was implemented in September 2011, where city employees are paying assuming into the... That assuming the uh, six, part, 6%. Six point, yeah, 6.5%. Yeah, where, where the, the city was paying for that before, now the uh, city employees are, are picking that up. Uh, the city manager employment contract is on the city website. The employee W-2 wages, employee salary survey, and market area. Um, the staffing levels and cost com comparing to other South Bay cities. Uh, we have the state controller certificate of compliance, which all cities are to be posting this kind of information on their website. Well, we actually have our certificate that we got from the secret uh, from the state controller's office to uh, you know giving us the approval of what is on our website. So Terrific. We have that. All monthly cash balance reports and payment warrant registers are available. We have our five-year financial model, the CIP, CAFR. 
Uh, we have all this information. So you're really, that. are you pleased with that? Because you heard transparency has like been the buzzword for a long yes, time. Yes, it has. And, yes, and it every has. level of government. And, and, and we're and we're continuing to, to do more. I mean, uh, I, you know, RPV has done more than I think other cities. And uh, I think we're, we're taking a leadership role in that in that aspect. And you just go on to palace40s.com slash RPV, like you said, to get yeah. all this kind of detailed information right there at your fingertips. There's... Uh, efforts underway actively to uh, work with the city, I mean work with the uh, school city, district. School district, yeah. Uh, our staff is talking with the school district staff. Uh, we also, uh, you know, helped fundraise, oh I'm sorry, we gave a grant last year to uh, to uh, the... Uh, Was it the Ed Foundation or to the, no? No, to, for PV's High's new pool. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. So that was was it for Penn High's pool or for P? It was for Penn High's pool. Excellent. Because we gave P some money to P. Right, High's Penn's school. now in the process of yeah. doing that. Excellent. A few years back, yeah. Well, the school district we all know is so important to the community because oh, yes, for lots of different of course, reasons. Of course. And um, so that's fabulous. So you're working on them and yeah. shared about recreation facilities. Yeah. That's yeah. always good. Having kids in the schools. Yes, it is. Right. Uh, and then Western Avenue. Uh, we got a Compass Blueprint grant. Uh, the end of last year, it's a hundred thousand dollar grant to come up with a new uh, vision for Western Avenue, new improvements for pedestrian walkways, medians, bicycle paths. Oh, that'd be great uh, to dress up the businesses there on Western Avenue. Staff has um, worked with Councilman Buscayano's office, and so it's a joint effort between the City of Los Angeles and RPV to, you know, fix up Western Avenue. In fact, tomorrow we're having our first meeting on uh, what we'll call the Vision, Western Avenue Vision Committee. Mm -hmm. And so there's some uh, individuals in the community that we've contacted, or staff has contacted, I should say, that uh, yeah, will be involved in that and helping to, uh, you know, benchmark and uh, be a sounding board on what we're proposing and get their ideas. Well, it's well. really an important quarter for the community oh, in yeah. so many fronts, yeah. you know. And um, I think it's you know the beginning of all our um, gateway uh, arteries into our city. I I know there's uh, you know there's a lot of talk about doing st things on on Hawthorne Boulevard as well, and I think that's something that we want to focus on I I in conjunction. But Western Avenue, I think, is something that has been kind of neglected for mm -hmm. in the past. So we want to make an effort to make that uh, beautiful gateway between the two cities and then into our And I'm sure the businesses especially will appreciate that. Oh, yes. And uh, so that was, uh, now we're moving on to number eight for City Goal, which is your city reserve policy. Yes, I, uh, I had proposed uh, that we get even more conservative on our... Um, are you kidding? No, yeah, okay. on, on our, on our, uh, yeah, you get even How more conservative, conservative are you gonna on, go our, on, on our general fund reserve. Go. And then uh, we sent that uh, request to the uh, Finance Advisory Committee, and they came back and said, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, you guys are already conservative enough. You're doing good, and nothing pre precludes you from putting in more money than your minimum reserve amount, which is 50% of uh, expenditures, our uh, general fund expenditures. And that's what you're supposed to have. Yeah, that's our, that's our threshold minimum. Okay. So next year, on uh, the end of our fixed school year, we're projected to have on June 30th $10,735,000 in our reserve. Wow. That's our general fund reserve. We're also projected on that same date to have $11,378,000 in our CIP reserve. So You're look, the city's looking very healthy that way. Well, yeah, I think our... Well, you have a $20 million I th budget. I think, you know, our citizens uh, and our residents should be, uh, should be uh, comfortable with what we're in the direction that we're moving. And, of course... We're, I think our council and prior councils, because I, I want to give you know credit to the prior councils because they have been fiscally conservative, and I think our group might even be a little bit more fiscally conservative, and so we're, um, you know, we're trying to do our best to watch out for the people's money.